I'm Linda Dolkey. I'm a demonstrator with Stampin' Up! here in Australia and today I'm playing with the new Brushos Colour Crystals. These are a new product in our current Occasions catalogue and they are heaps of fun. You can do so many different things with them and I think you're going to really love this technique today. So today I'm going to show you a technique using these fabulous new things called brushos. Um, these are in our um, latest occasions catalogue which was released on January 3rd 2018. So that is this catalogue here um, and it says love it, live it, share it which is Stampin' Up's uh, little motto at the moment. Um, and you'll find them on page 26. It's quite small just here but they have shown some nice samples and even a little bit of how-to here on how to get this great look with this butterfly the one that's in this stamp set but I'm going to show you something different today so what I'm actually going to do is um, I'm actually going to be using um, embossing folders almost as a little printing press um, with the brushos and show you what a fantastic effect we get. Um, both these cards have used this technique. They're totally different um, and I'll show you why. This is the one I want to concentrate on today because I just love this effect. So that's using this um, leaves uh, embossing folder. I don't think that's actually the proper name of it. Um, so I'll pop that up on the screen. You should be able to see the correct name. Um, this is one of the dynamic embossing folders, which means it's extra thick. And when you use these, if you're using them with your Big Shot, you only use them with one cutting plate instead of two because they're so thick that you won't be able to get them through otherwise. Um, but um, to get this effect, you actually don't need the Big Shot. So let, you show, let me show you how I did it. It's very cool. Um, when you're working with the brushos, we have them in five colours. They're not a new product, but this is the first time Stampin' Up! has offered them. And um, they are basically uh, pigment, colour pigment in um, in crystal powder form. So um, each of the little, little containers um, has quite a lot of powder in it. I can't imagine ever running out because you use such a little amount to get a lot of colour. Um, and here's a couple of things that they've advised us that instead of actually opening the lid and trying to pour it out because it's so fine it tends to go everywhere, you're better off to pop a couple of holes in the top and use them almost like salt and pepper shakers. So um, that's how you would use those and I'll show you that in a sec. Um, and then to stop the powder from coming out in between times or moisture getting in, you could either cover them with washi tape or some people I've seen putting push pins in to make the holes and then leaving the pins in there so that's another idea as well um, for the paper that I'm going to use today I'm going to use shimmery white um, you can also use watercolor paper you need paper that's a little more sturdy so that it will hold a little bit of water um, but I do like the effect I get with shimmery white and it also works out a little cheaper than the watercolor paper so um, so it's a good cost effective base to use for this technique um, and you'll need a couple of things for cleaning up because it does make a little bit of a mess um, you'll need some either white baby wipes or some paper towel or both <laughs> I wiped when I was done I wiped it off with uh, baby wipes and then dried it off with the paper towel so you'll see all that as we go through okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my folder and it doesn't really, you're going to get a diff, slightly different effect depending on which side of the folder you use. But I actually use the one that's on the back of where the logo is. Um, and I'll show you why. The design of the leaves is actually recessed into this side. Whereas this side is actually pops, it comes out a little bit. I find that it just seems to hold the design a little bit better on this recessed side. So, But by all means, try both because you'll get slightly different effects. And depending on what colours you want to do, I actually went for this particular one. This is actually yellow and blue. That's all I've used. So this is the blue. It's called Prussian blue. And this is the yellow, which is just called yellow. <laughs> and that's all I've used for that particular card. So I actually started off on the bottom. So I've already gone and I've poked a couple of holes in the top of my brush hoe. So I'm not even going to open the lid. And I'm going to start, it doesn't really matter which, just decide which, which um, end you want to call the bottom of the card. I want to have the blue at the bottom. So I'm actually going to tap it out. Now you can see how I've just poured a little bit, I don't know if you can see it very well. I'll just pick it up so maybe you can see that better. Um, a little bit of powder here. And when you tip it over, you'll see a little bit of powder comes out. You don't need very much. I'm just sort of putting it onto some of the leaves. The other thing that um, I find sometimes some of them don't come out as easily depending on how many holes is to tap it on. So, and I went about halfway. 
maybe just over halfway with my glue. Like I said, don't need very much. Doesn't look like anything's gonna happen there, but I promise you it will. Then I started with the other end, I started with the yellow, and this one I did need to tap out just a little bit more. And what I did was I overlapped in the middle some of the yellow and the blue together. Because yellow and blue makes green, right? So that's how I got, when you have a look here, you can see the card is more blue at the bottom, more yellow at the top and green in the middle. Okay, that's what I'm going for. So there's a little bit more powder in the middle because I've used both colors there, all right? Okay, so this is where we come to make our mess. Make sure you've got some paper down or um, you know, you've protected your surface somehow. And I'm just going to spray, just like a little spray thing of water. Oh, if you don't want your hands to end up looking like mine, <laughs> you might want to um, wear some gloves. Um, but I don't really bother about it. I find um, the ink all comes off when I wash my hair. And I wash my hair every other day, so usually. So that means that, um, that it all gets cleaned up pretty quickly. And if it's really bad, I would wash my hair again as a special thing. But, um, okay, so you can see when I spray this, I'm putting on a reasonable amount of water. Some of the design is coming through. And then I'm go, gonna go from the other end, I'm gonna go with the yellow. You can see I've got blue, yellow, and a bit of green in the middle there. Now you want the water to be pooling on there. So I don't want it really running off the edges, that would be too much, but I want it to be pooling and it's getting pretty close. So, yep, that looks like there's plenty of water on there. So I'm gonna get my very first piece of shimmery white and I'm gonna lay it down on that surface and then I'm gonna close it, okay? And I'm actually not even gonna use a big shot. I'm just gonna use this as a little printing press. You could run a, a brayer over it, a rubber brayer if you have one, or you can just use your hand and give it a good old press. You can see why my hands ended up a bit inky. Because <laughs> I did get some on at this point. And then I open it up and I'm gonna peel it off from the other side and you'll be able to see what you've got now. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love this effect. So you get the, the leaves coming through and you've got this beautiful background and all sorts of cool color things going on here. And if you wanted to do, you could do a second one. Um, in fact, I might just to show you, I could add more water or this will give me a much lighter effect because most of the water and the color has already gone on the first card. But if I just wanted a really light one, I could do it again. Oh, I almost ran off the edge there. So this time I'm gonna get a, a different effect. Now, the very first one I did, I actually added a little bit more water. So more water was pooling in the leaves. Can you see how it's picked up more of the, the dots of the water and the, the color has gone into that? I actually really like that effect. So maybe I could have added a little bit more water to this one. So this one's different. Every, and that's the thing with this technique. You're gonna get a different look every single time you do it. Different again, but still really, really beautiful. Which one do you like best? What do you think? I'm not sure, I like them both. They're different. All right, so this one is gonna be much lighter. So let's have a look. You can see, when you turn it over, you can see some of the color has spread around. And that's totally different again. Oh, three completely different looks. Now I could have sprayed this one with more water and it would have spread around a little bit more, but I just thought I'd let it go and see what happened just like that. Okay, now just wanna show you, I'm not gonna do this one, but I'll show you. This one I just use yellow and green and a little bit of orange up here in the, it's not called orange, it's called gamboge, but, um, but basically it's orange. Um, this one is similar. But what I did was I actually ran this one through the Big Shot. So I did exactly the same, but instead of just printing it with my hand, I ran it through the Big Shot and that spread all the water out. So it, you didn't end up with as many white spaces because the water has actually been pushed through the paper. So, um, but I liked that look as well. I thought that was really pretty and I finished it off with some um, glitter uh, punched out with the leaf punch and a little bit of Hessian uh, twine, uh, Hessian ribbon here behind here. It's called burlap. This not called burlap ribbon, not called hessian. In Australia, we say hessian. We don't say burlap. Um, 
and then I've also used some linen thread just looped behind here and pop that on as well and so that's a that's a different look again so this is all the same technique and you can see how it turns out different every single time but it's a heap of fun um, when you're cleaning up just move this out of the way all I did was I used a baby wipe to clean out the clean out the um, actual embossing folder And then I wiped it off with a paper towel. And it was all clean. All clean enough to use again and not have to be a, a problem. Probably just let it to dry a little bit too because there's likely to be a little bit of moisture left over even after you use a paper towel on it. But you get the idea anyway. So good as new, ready to go with normal paper embossing again. But how cool is that with the brushos? I love it such a great effect and as you can see I've been having a good old play today I've done quite a lot of them but okay now that I've done that one these two are my favorite don't those colors look great so that's the yellow and the blue and you can see where it mixes in the middle to make green it looks fabulous okay guys that's it for me today I hope you enjoyed that little technique it's a lot of fun you can experiment with different embossing folders and different colors um, I hope it goes great for you bye